This here is Pesto, and Pesto is an awesome dog and probably one of the smarter dogs that I've worked with. Uh, picks some stuff up really uh, quickly, as you saw in the video above, about teaching him not to stay. And so I think he was uh, somebody else taught him, might have taught him to sit pretty, but we'll give you credit just for being a smart dog because he's picked up on a lot of other things as well. This is his roadmap to success. Now, he had pneumonia and uh, some other issues when he was uh, adopted. He is still intact. Pretty rare for a dog to go through a shelter pro or a rescue and still be intact. Um, I, don't, I think the intactness is, is related to some of his issues. It's not going to fix his problems getting him neutered, which his guardians are going to do. Um, but I think it will help uh, turn down the volume and make it easier for him to focus on them and to practice. Now in this session, we just got done going through some exercises inside and taught the guardians how to teach him to focus. When you're doing the focus exercise, I'd like you to practice each guardian, practice that two to three times a day with about 10 to 12 treats, cut them in half so that they're not, you know, although you could actually use a little weight. Um, and then practice in different parts of your house at first. And if, eventually you want to come out into this courtyard because there are a lot of distractions. There's a dog next door, there's smells, there's birds, there's hummingbirds, there's all sorts of stuff. And it makes it harder for the dog uh, to actually focus and that's the whole point. We want to put the dog in position to succeed. So we're going to put, help it start practicing in the easiest capacity possible. Then we're gradually going to make it more and more challenging until we get to a real world situation. I'd like the guardians to get to the point where we can get a 15 to 20 second focus on the second movement um, within the end of the week. Now at that point, then when we're on walks, I'd like to practice the focus at times on walks. So we're walking and there's no other dogs around. There's no other people around. There's no reason for him not to focus because now when we do the focus, we're going to do it as we're walking. So as we're walking, every once in a while you say focus and he looks up at you. If he's on the left side, I hold it up and go straight to his mouth and say focus. And we're going to do this as we're walking. It's going to take the guardians a little bit of practice before this becomes natural movement for them. But eventually then if you are walking down the street and you see him lower his head, his ears flip back, he starts breathing heavy, his tail gets up, or any of these signs that he's starting to get excited, then we give him the focus exercise right at the beginning. And it's very easy for him to look at us. Just like two humans that start arguing about whether like Trump or Hillary, at the beginning of the conversation, if you say, I don't want to talk politics, it's easier for them to let it go. But if they've been arguing for a couple minutes, you come back out in the courtyard and they've been arguing for five minutes, they're like, guys, let's not talk about politics. Well, if he wants to support a racist, that's fine. They can't let it go. So for dogs, if we can catch them sooner, it's going to be much more effective. Once a dog is what we call above threshold, where they're really freaking out, they're not going to listen to you, you're not going to be able to help them, you're not going to be able to teach them anything. So uh, the focus exercise is a great way to redirect your dog's attention. Now, um, uh, speaking of, uh, uh, of activities, the guardians have uh, really uh, studied a lot of the videos on my website. So they've already been petting with a purpose. I want them to do that more and more often. Um, he it kind of goes into the namaste position a lot when we ask him for a sit. So when he does, if we were asking him for a sit and he goes into namaste, at first while we're teaching namaste, we can do that, but eventually we want to say, that's not what I want. I want to sit specifically. So as soon as you start, uh, you tell him to sit and he starts sitting, go like this. And as soon as he lifts up, pull your arm back and just lose interest. And as soon as he sit back, rocks into a sitting position, then reach back over and start petting him. Again, light switch on, light switch off. So when you do the thing that I want, the specific command I want, you'll get that reward. Now he's offering namaste as a way of engaging with his guardians, which is awesome, but I'd like him to also do that with sitting and, and other things as well. We call this manding or learning to mand when a dog can offer a behavior and influence the humans by offering that behavior. And so he's already got it, uh, getting it with namaste, but he'll get it with other things as well. Um, now the guardians also have a tendency to use a lot of words. So we want to try to consolidate the words, come up with a list of the command words. And, and if, we, if one, of the, one of us is saying, come here, and the word is come, we say vocabulary, the person goes, come. Now I like to use this hand motion so I have a 45 degree bend here and I have my forearm is parallel with the ground. I want to get lifted up and down like this. So before I call the dog, I hold my hand out like this and then I say, come. Now he didn't look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sound to get him to look at me and then start lowering my hand. The lower you go, the more it's for the dog to make him sit. I rock over his head. Well, if you have a treat in your hand initially, that motion will get him used to doing it and I don't have any treats with me. But, uh, but and eventually when he, let's, uh, uh, do you have a treat with you? Oh, they're right here. I do have treats with me. All right, let's try that again. So I rock over the head, and then as soon as he gets down, I lower it, let him lick it off my hand. After it goes in his mouth, I would say the word sit, and then tickle him under his chin. We're not always gonna give him a treat. I'll show you from the side, it'll be a little bit easier from the side. Pasta, or uh, pesto, <laughs> pasta lives in Hollywood. Sit. And then I do this tickle. So we're always going to do the tickle. We're not always going to give him a treat. But this way he always gets at least a little bit of reward. And also that helps him 
get his nose up in the air. Remember, a dog, when it feels good about itself, his nose is parallel to the ground or tilted up. Insecure dogs look down. So the guardian right now is trying to call him off camera. So hold your hand up, make a kiss and say, come for, oh, there you go. That was easy. And then reward and say, come. Come. So the guardians have a tendency, sometimes they said, oh, what a good boy. Oh, what a good boy. But oh, what a good boy doesn't mean come. So when he comes, say come. When he sits, say sit. When he lays down, say crash or whatever the word is. He gives you a downward dog, say downward dog uh, or namaste or whatever it is. And that way we're making specific communications. A lot of times we look at it like, the dog's doing something I like, but it's not the specific thing that I like. If I go to a restaurant and I ordered a hamburger and they bring me a steak, I like steak too. That's not what I ordered. So we want the dog to do what we want, not what it thinks we want. Um, and also by only using one word, it makes it easy, it consolidates, it makes it easier for the dog. Now, if he nudges us or wants attention, again, redirect him and do something else. Sit, sit. So that's what I would do if he starts going to namaste. Immediately stop, in, uh, disengage. And as soon as he goes back down, then start to re-engage. Providing affection or stopping providing affection with good timing is a huge part of how we communicate with dogs. Okay, um, let me see, what else did we go over? Um, uh, we went over some loose leash training. We, we did some bad adjustment training with Ruby. Um, and uh, come. So right there, that's passive training. He came on his own, I didn't ask him to, but I'm rewarding him because that's the end result that I'm looking for. The more you do that, the easier it's gonna be to get him to sit and do the rest of these things. Now, he does like to pull on the leash and the guardians have been using my technique of uh, stopping when the dog moves in front. So what I do is I have the dog in a loose leash, I, I assign the dog a left or right side, which the guardians have done. And as soon as the dog moves in front of me, I stop and I let the dog go out. And as soon as it gets to the end of the leash and the leash gets tense, I make a kissing sound and I crouch down as soon as the dog looks at me, comes back to me, I give it a treat. Now, if I keep it on this side, a lot of times what I do is I hold the, the leashes in this hand. So I hold the treat and I lead the dog kind of into a circle. So then it comes in, it turns around and now it's facing this direction. Then I put it in a sit. Then we continue going. Don't have to, always have to do the sit, you can do the sit. Now, when we go for a walk, we have a tendency to think of the duration or the destination or how long we're going for the walk. And if the dog pulls, we get frustrated because we're like, hey, I'm doing this for you, buddy. Why are you pulling? You're making it harder. That's frustrating for us and it's frustrating for the dog. So what I would recommend you do is, is take all that baggage away. Just go outside your house and practice walking from the, your house to two driveways down, turn around and walk for two drives down on the other side of the house. So basically, and just give yourself a duration. I'm gonna practice for 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we go out and we practice. And once we're done with 12 minutes, we come back inside. After a while, the dog's like, come. The dog's like, well, when we go for a walk, it doesn't always mean we're going to the park or to wherever we're going. Sometimes it just means we're practicing. And the idea is, eventually as you're practicing this, when, you, when you're ready for the next step, when you just stop and the dog automatically stops or you see the dog looking at you, but the step that it'll get to before that is when you stop and the dog gets the end of the leash, it'll just turn around and automatically come back to you. So at first, as soon as it hits the end of the leash, make a kissing sound when it looks, crouch down. But after you've done this for about a week or so, then when he gets the end of the leash, wait one second before you make the kiss. Give him an opportunity to turn around and come back on his own. But always have a treat, so when he does come back to you, he gets that treat. And he'll start doing it more and more often. Like I said, he's a smart dog. Um, now, uh, we also showed how to use, uh, so as we we're outside, we have to wait for the surroundings. So uh, we, I showed the guardians how to create a, uh, uh, a name for the dog beds, and I would give each dog bed its own unique name. Now, uh, we feed him, he eats really fast, so we can do a couple things. If we're gonna be around with him, and the door's gonna be open and he's gonna be free, we can put, um, when you put his kibble in the bowl, you put hot water in the kibble, just enough so it's floating about an eighth of an inch, swirl it around and put it on top of the refrigerator or something. Wait an hour. When you go to get it, there will be no water. All the kernels will blow up like marshmallows in a, in a microwave. They've absorbed the water. Now for dogs, food, the temperature food is more important than the taste. So then what I would do is I would put in like a pint of hot water. Not so hot where it's scalding, but very warm. Now the dog has to drink all that water before I can get to the level of the food, and then the food is the consistency of mashed potatoes. So I can't wolf it down as much, they have to lick it up. And it's, you can't eat mashed potatoes as fast as you can eat other things. So after a while, the water slows down the process, and then the mushiness slows down, and all because we made it warmer, it's more appealing to him. So this way, is a, it's just a nice way to get a dog to stop scarfing it down, because it's not healthy for them. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is feed him in little portions or feed him out of your hand if you have a dog with this problem, but I'm guessing that'll take care of it. But don't do that if you're not gonna be, if he's not gonna be able to be outside, because dogs uh, digest fluids in about 45 minutes, so he will need to urinate in 45 minutes, or an hour, it varies a little bit. So don't do it if you're gonna be gone, he's gonna be pent up, or you're gonna have accidents in the house. 
Um, let me see. Uh, we went over the escalating consequences, how to disagree with unwanted behaviors. If you forget how to do any of those, let me know. Um, I also showed the guardians how to break things down into individual steps, like leaving the house um, or going to the door. The guardians want the dog to stay a certain feet a distance away from the door and not necessarily always run through it. So what I would do is maybe, and you might want to temporarily put down some masking tape, create like a border, and then practice leaving the apartment. So we go to the door, and, and we, we, when he crosses the threshold, we go, we put our back to the door, we walk towards the dog using the third consequence. Once he gets to the behind the line, we stop, pause for a half a second, and then take two steps backwards. Boom, boom. And then pause for another quarter second. If he stays in place, you take another step back towards the door. But you're keeping your authority pointed out the door. And if you take it two steps back and you start to come forward, you hiss and march towards him. And so we're teaching him, when I go to the door, my job as a dog is to stay behind this boundary line. Get a namaste out of you. That's a dance. I want a namaste. Namaste. See, so we redirected him. The other dog was still barking, but he's still more focused on this. And this is the opportunity to use the focus. So if you have a dog that's passing you and you've got that 15 second focus, you can redirect his attention like this while the other dog is passing him. Once he gets the tree, he's like, all right, I'm ready to play with it. Oh, the dog's gone. So that's the whole point of this. Now, uh, the Guardian um, uh, likes to, uh, one of the Guardians works on the computer from home uh, for one of his jobs. And so sometimes uh, uh, Pesto comes up and he wants to play with them, he wants to engage, and the Guardian was reaching over and petting him a little bit and then trying to go back to, pet, uh, to working, and the guard dog was trying to engage with him. So we want to interpret that as when he uh, does that is his way of saying, I've got too much energy. So instead of petting him, which he certainly likes, it's not going to placate him. So what we would do instead is take him outside and play fetch. And maybe for five minutes, seven minutes, don't play fetch for the length of time, fetch for the number of fetches. I just find it's an easier calibration. So basically, and I, the other thing I talked about the Guardian is doing is to keep an exercise journal for a month. So write the date at the top of the page and then write the time and how long the fetch was or, or how the walk was, how many, the time and how many fetches. If, there's a, if he has a barking incident, a squirrel or whatever, write that stuff down with what else is going on. So he's barking at street cleaning or whatever it is. And so you, after you're doing it for a while, you start noticing every time it's been longer a certain period of time, that's when he's most pr prone to get in an accident. So now we can just feed him the punch and start giving him exercise uh, you know, a half an hour before his time when he normally is going to be asking for stuff. Dogs, exercise is better if we can sprinkle it throughout the day as opposed to use, doing it just once in the morning, once in the evening. If you're only going to do it once, do it early in the day. But it's much, much better if you can sprinkle in little ones throughout the day. Now, uh, the, uh, the Guardian said that he likes to fetch sometimes, and sometimes he's just like, eh, not feeling it. If he's not feeling it, don't try to force it. You'll get frustrated, he'll get frustrated. His last memory in grandma of it will be of him being frustrated and you being upset, and he won't want to do it again. Now, when he brings you the item, just hold it the treat in front of his nose and wait for him to drop the item. Ah, I'll give you a namaste for that. Let's do another one. Namaste. That's a dance. Namaste. Um, so hold the treat in front of his nose and just wait for him to drop it. Don't tell him to drop. And this is helpful to do it inside when he has high when he has low value items. A tennis ball, things he's allowed to have at any point. So he's got it in his mouth and don't do it when he's holding it. Only when he's got it in his mouth and hold the treat up in his mouth. And then as soon as he drops it, pop the treat in his mouth, say the word drop, and then don't pick up the item. So now you're training him to drop stuff, is, and I get my stuff back, so we don't have to protect it. Then we're playing fetch, I say fetch three times when I throw it. As I throw it, I say the word fetch. When he picks it up out of his mouth, I say, or off the ground, I say fetch. And when he brings it over and I pop the treat in his mouth, I say fetch. But after a while, he'll come and start spitting the, treat, the deal in front of you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm also a big proponent of, of delayed gratification and using that to help the dog develop more self-control. So if we're playing fetch and he's getting good and he's coming and dropping it, now instead of just uh, dropping it, once he drops it, sit. And then I pick it up and throw it. And, after he'll sit, and then he comes to start dropping it, sitting. Then we sit and we wait for two seconds before I throw it, and then five seconds. So we gradually elongate this, so he has to wait longer and longer periods of time. He has to play the game on our rules. Reward, crash, or whatever the word is you want to use. I'd like the Guardians to get in the habit of using fun command words when they're teaching him new tricks. Um, dogs can read a human facial expression, so if you say crash or your dog flops down and your friends laugh, that will make your dog feel more engaged with your guests. Um, also, because he's such a smart dog, I would like to see the Guardians uh, pick six, well, alternate for uh, three months. Now, they're going on a little vacation, so maybe do this when you get back. So one week, we have one Guardian who goes to YouTube. I'm going to teach him to roll over and look for a video that teaches how to roll over, and they're going to only use positive reinforcement. They're punishing the dog to use some different method. 
you have to get out, let me know, and I'll help you. Um, and then once the dog can do it, then tell the other guardian, and then all week long we practice rollover. Then the next week, the next guardian says, I'm going to teach you to balance a treat on my nose or crawl or whatever it is. And don't do really hard ones. At first, do an easy one so you feel better that you're making progress with your dog. And I mean, uh, and you can use passive training for this as well. I taught my dog Quest to grumble. When I, when he was not getting what he wanted, he would bark and bounce around. And go, rawr, rawr, rawr. So I'd say grumble. And so now I can say, and now I've assigned a hand signal. So I can say grumble, and he goes, rawr, 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 rawr. and it's funny as hell. And so if he does things like, now, that's really kind of what we're doing with Namaste. But if he does other things, if he brings you that thing, maybe you call that one yogurt because it looks two different colors or whatever. Come up with funny command words. But those fun command words can really help. I also have a naughty dog name for my dog. His name is Quest. When he's doing something I don't like, I call him Rufus. And I come up with a name that flows off your tongue, but it's very different. So now if I say Quest sit, and he doesn't sit, and I say Rufus, he sits down. He knows he's about to get in trouble. I don't punish him, but I do have consequences and things like that, or I might not pet him if he doesn't do what I want. I might walk away. So after a while, it's just nice so that if he's doing the wrong thing, you say Rufus, he knows who I'm not doing the right thing. And when we say his name, he comes to us. Now, uh, the guardian, one of the guardians was using his name to call him to come. We wanted to uh, his name to look at us, not necessarily come to us, because there might be a situation where I wanted to look but not come. Um, so make sure we're saying come or whatever the command word is. And the more we do the passive training, the easier it will be for him to do it. I'm going to name all the toys. The guardians uh, have a couple toys for him, but I usually like a dog to have at least 20 toys. Now, I like a variety of toys. I like plushies. Unless the dog constantly destroys them, he might be a destroying. So if that's the case, get stuffless toys. If, if, and you don't necessarily need to get plushies. Um, if a dog has a really strong prey drive, I recommend not squeaky toys. Because squeaky toys make the exact same sound that baby bunny rabbits make as they're being killed. And so the dog is essentially practicing hunting and killing with those. Uh, but having rope toys like that is great. I like antlers. I'd recommend the guardians get an, uh, a, a deer or uh, elk antler or two. They're expensive, but they will last a long time. Now antlers, you want to get one where it's intact all the way around. Some of them will be split down the middle. That's okay for your first antler, but the dog will go through it quicker. And we want the dog to, the whole point of it is dogs chew on things when they're nervous or anxious or to self-soothe. So we want to give him plenty of options for that. Fortunately, he doesn't chew on stuff in the house, but sometimes if I can't do it, I manifest it in different ways. And so we have a great yard out here. We're in Santa Monica, and, and most people don't have a yard anywhere near this big. Come. Instead of saying good boy, good boy doesn't hurt, but it doesn't help. Come helps. Um, so uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. What was I just saying? Antlers. Antlers. Uh, so um, having uh, oh, for out here, out here. Hey, get some sticks. If you're in the park and there's a nice long stick, if you get a stick about that long that's straight, he'll pick it up and run around and he'll feel really good about himself having a stick and then eventually chew it up in a little bit, but that's something they do when they self-soothe. I also like getting dogs a jolly ball. A jolly ball come in different sizes. I would get one for him about the size of a volleyball. It's got a little V uh, triangle that sticks out of it. It allows the dog to pick it up and carry it around. Well, what all dogs do is chew the triangle off it, and then they chew little pieces of it off. I like my dog to have one toy they can destroy. Unless he's eating the plastic, allow him to do that. Just pick up the pieces. Um, also, we went over edibles, and this is California. We're not talking about uh, <laughs> concentrates or stuff like that. We're talking about edibles for dogs. So, kneecaps are great. Cow's ears are great. Uh, tracheas. Uh, chicken feet, duck feet, uh, turkey feet, turkey heads, turkey necks. Stuff that have bully sticks especially. You really like the bully sticks. Now, if you get bully sticks, I like getting them from The Natural Dog Company. Natural Dog Company makes ointments for the nose. Um, you can get them cheaper. But they will be, they will smell when your dog, when you take them out of the bag, when your dog licks them, and when your dog farts them out. The natural dog company has low or no odor, or they're odor free. They're a little bit more expensive, but your nose will thank you. Um, let me think, what else? Um, uh, when the guardians feed him, I don't think I covered this. Uh, the guardians are very, uh, very health conscious, um, and so I'm sure that they eat breakfast. But um, when dogs eat, they eat in the order of their rank. So if we're gonna go grab some food at maybe Rose Cafe on our way to work, the dog doesn't, and we feed the dog, the dog doesn't see us eat, the dog's like, why should I listen to you? You don't even have eating privileges. So if we're gonna feed the dog and we're not gonna eat at that point, just get a piece of celery, a carrot, something that you can eat, preferably something crunchy. Eat it in five or more bites. Smoothies and coffees don't count. They don't understand liquids as a source of nourishment. So eat something in five or more bites, then give him permission to eat his food. Now the guardians are already make him wait for permission to eat his food, which is awesome. Um, and, the, and delaying that a little bit longer can also be beneficial. But basically, the more that we help him see, because we're gonna feed him twice a day, so if every time before we feed him, we eat first, that's just a natural way for him to see us a little bit more of an authority figure. 
Another dirty secret with dog behavior is to always outlast your dog and always follow through. If you're somewhere and you're out here and the dog's over there barking at the dog over there and you say come once and he doesn't come, come over to him, attach your leash and bring him with you. Don't drag him and don't punish him or anything like that. The guardians here wouldn't do that. Some people would, unfortunately. And just let him know, look, when I ask you to come, it's not optional. You're either going to do it voluntarily or I'm going to make it happen. Now, the more we do passive training in the house, every time he comes to us, we pet him and say come, the more he's going to be inclined to do so for that. Uh, now, when we are on walks, um, if he is reactive to another dog, he's not so much, he's not aggressive, he just really wants to play with other dogs and he spazzes out and I think spooks the other dog they don't know how to play with them. So the bat training video above should help the guardians practice that, get a long lead if we need to, and just practice letting it out. Remember to practice your breaking so we don't get the end of leash and have it jerk. That creates a negative association that can really backfire. Santa Monica Airport is not too far away. Um, the other thing is practice the mime pulling. So if he's not coming, he's the end of the leash, just run your hand down the leash back and forth so you can feel, the, feel those vibrations. And as soon as he looks at you, crouch down and make a kissing sound so he comes over to you. All right, um, anything else I'm thinking, I'm forgetting about? Mm -hmm. If I am forgetting anything, you guys can call me at any time. Please put my number in your phone and text me at, uh, if you have any questions. I get so many phone calls and emails. Sometimes uh, emails will take me a couple days to get back. I get about 50 emails a day. I just can't keep track. As a client, I don't want you to have to wait, so please text me right away. Text me a picture of pasta the first time so I recognize your number. Pasta. Yeah. Uh, uh, pasta, sorry, not pasta. He's in uh, Hollywood. Uh, and then once I get the picture the first time, then I'll be able to reference, and I'll remember who he is. But after working thousands of dogs, I just can't keep all of you guys separate. Um, all right, let's see if we can end this with pesto coming. Come. Come over here, buddy. Come on. Up here. There we go. This is pesto, not pasta. All the pesto pasta is one of my favorites. And this is, sit. This is pesto's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.